Hello, this is Jennifer, and I am really, really excited to share with you a fun technique today that's easy and gives amazing results. We will be using our dies to create the look of embossing folders. This is a great way to stretch your supplies and also to create a background that matches your die cuts perfectly. It's easy, easy, easy to do. And I have several examples that I'll share with you today, along with a few other fun technique ideas. But the best part about today's technique is you can use supplies you have and really any dies you may have. Okay, let's get started with this example. You can see the texture in the background and how that matches the die cuts we put on top. Now for this card and actually my next one, I'm using this great new Simon Says Stamp die set called Fine Floral Stem Dies. I really like the style of this and I think it can be used in a lot of different ways. Today I'll use it for the textured background and for the focal point die cuts on the front of the card. Now I have cut this die cut twice from heavyweight white cardstock and I'm gluing those two die cuts together. Now this could be a lighter weight cardstock, but you might need to do three layers instead of two for this technique. You'll have to experiment with whatever you have. I'll link below to the heavyweight white cardstock that I really use for almost all of my card making and two layer die cuts of that cardstock is perfect for this. Okay, so I'm gluing them together with Gina K Connect Liquid Adhesive. You could use whatever adhesive you may have. I reach for this one often because it dries clear, it dries strong, and I can wiggle things around until I get them exactly where I want. So once I have those lined up, I will put something heavy on it while it dries. For this technique, you will also need a die cut machine along with the flexible embossing mat that is used with it. Now, most die cut machines come with this flexible mat. Sometimes they're sold separately. You'll just follow your die cut machine's instructions to make an impression with the die, and that's a sandwich that you will use for this technique. So I have my Spellbinders Platinum. I'm following the instructions here on making an impression or embossing with a die. And there's that gray flexible mat. So now I'll take a piece of cardstock. You could use any cardstock here. For this example, I'm using watercolor paper from Tim Holtz because it's nice and soft and takes an impression well. I misted it with a little bit of water and I'm laying it onto that flexible embossing mat. Then I'll take that double layer die cut and place it on top. Then my top sandwich plate, so you're just gonna follow the sandwich that your die cut machine has for making an impression with a die. I'm gonna run that through and watch. You'll get this beautiful impression. It looks like an embossing folder did it. And the best part is both sides are beautiful. So there's the back side of it where the image is raised. Now I have to flip this over and carefully remove that doubled up die cut. Sometimes because I misted my cardstock, the die cut wants to stick to it. So you can either heat set it and that will release that die cut, or you can just carefully remove it as I did. And look at, you even get the detail lines that the die cut had in it. And so this is the front where the image is indented. So both sides look beautiful and it's a great way to use your die to get that uh, embossing folder look. Now I'm gonna do a few more examples. Again, here I'm using watercolor paper, but you'll see me later use regular cardstock. Both work completely fine. So I'm placing that doubled up die cut face down onto my misted white cardstock. So I misted it with a little bit of water, run it through my die cut machine following the sandwich that my manufacturer's instructions give for making an impression with a die. Now I can carefully remove that die cut and there we have another beautiful impression. You can see you even pick up the details again of the die cut. And by the way, that was the same doubled up die cut. You can use it over and over and over again. Then you could actually use that die cut as the focal point on your card. This time I'm using regular cardstock and I actually have two die cuts that are both doubled up. So it's two die cuts thick and I'm placing those onto my cardstock background. I did mist my cardstock once again, just to help it get a better impression and not kind of get any rough edges. So actually here I have three doubled up die cuts. One I kind of cut a bit smaller so I could cover more of the background with this die cut. 
Another option you could do is to use a background die, cut two of the die cuts, glue them together, and then do this technique. And that would really look like you created a background with an embossing folder, but really you're just repurposing your die cuts. But here I covered up most of the background using multiple doubled up die cuts. And look how beautiful that is. Very nice impression, very deep. You pick up that detail, and this was done with just regular colored cardstock. And again, you could use either side. I'll actually do two examples with this flower die cut, one where I use the indented side and one where I use the raised side. So here I have another piece of cardstock, just regular, I think this is 100 pound weight cardstock, putting my doubled up die cuts on there. I did mist my cardstock first, which by the way, you can really skip if you want to, but sometimes I find it does a better job. Now I'll run that through my machine using that same sandwich. I've got that flexible mat underneath there and we'll get that deep impression. So that flexible mat allows you to really press that doubled up die cut into your cardstock, giving that impression. So I think this is really fun because you can create a background with texture that matches the die cut that you plan to put on top. This is a great way to really stretch your supplies with any dies you may have. Next, I have pieces of all to new double-sided adhesive sheet that are cut slightly smaller than my background panel. I'm gonna put that on the back and then place this onto a white note card. By using the full sheet of adhesive, I can be sure that the uh, background stays nice and flat, yet the texture stays there. By the way, the colored panels are four by five and a quarter, and the note cards that I'm adding them to are four and a quarter by five and a half. I will next create the die cuts to add to the front of the card. I'd use the flower die to cut once from white cardstock and once from silver matte cardstock. I'm cutting the flower portion off of the silver cardstock die cut and just gluing the stems and leaves onto the white one. That way I have white flowers and silver leaves and stems. Now you definitely could keep the whole entire die cut silver and leave the flower silver because we're gonna add peach flowers on top but at the time, I wasn't really sure which direction I was headed in, and I'm making two identical floral pieces. Now I have some peach flowers. The die cuts individual flowers and flower centers, and I am inking up the center of the flowers using a small blending brush and Simon Says Stamp Positively Saturated Ink in the watermelon color. I love this color. It's a beautiful kind of peachy red, and it looks nice just blended there at the center of the flower. Notice I'm not taking much effort to do great blending. I just want to add that look of dimension. Now I'll add these flowers onto the white flowers on our stem die cut. And then I, on top of that, will add vellum flower die cuts. I thought it'd be fun to do that additional flower in vellum so that it doesn't become like a solid round flower, but instead kind of has these soft petals floating on top. I'm just using one dot of the Gina K liquid adhesive at the center of the flower, and then I press it in with the piercing tool, and that will glue that vellum in place. Next, I'm adding a clear dazzling gemstone from Simon Says Stamp right to the center of the flowers. These are new gemstones and they seem to sparkle a bit more than others that I have. There is clear, there's I think yellow, green, and they even have a rainbow. But I thought clear worked well here. You'll see later how much they kind of glisten with the light. And although I'm not using the rainbow version, I just wanted to show you a close up look at it because I think they're really cool. Depending on how you tilt it in the light, you see a different color. You see pink, you see yellow, you see green. Just makes for a really fun embellishment to add to cards. And I'm a big fan of that bit of bling. All right, so I have my two arrangements here and I'm gonna give one of them a haircut so that I can better make them fit across my card. I wanted to make it look like these were kind of cascading down from the top corner. Once I'm happy with the arrangement, I'll use some liquid adhesive and then put something heavy on it while it dries. Now it's time for the sentiment and I'm using a new sentiment and die set from Simon Says Stamp and CZ Design called Birthday Basics. This is a great birthday stamp set because it has many different ways to say happy birthday and I really like the sentiment that says you're a gift. Now I knew I liked all of these sentiments and I knew I was gonna end up using them. So I'm actually taking the whole stamp set and taping it into my Misty stamping tool. That way I can stamp all of these greetings at once many, many times. I'll stamp it with a basic black ink. This is Altenew Obsidian Black Ink onto white cardstock. Now 
I knew I was going to use all these. So I took the time off screen to stamp a bunch of these and then die cut all of them. I'm not going to show the whole process in this video because I've shown it before. I actually did a live a few weeks ago. It was, I think, my first live where I showed this process where I can stamp a bunch of sentiments and then easily die cut them out very quickly. And you can end up with tons of sentiments for your cards or to save for the future. I will link to that video up here in the top right at the end of this video and in the description below. I encourage you to check it out. It's a great way to mass produce sentiments and have them ready. And you can see them all lined up there across the top. I really like that you're a gift sentiment. I think it's good for non-birthday too. It's just a, what a nice sentiment to receive from someone. And so I added that across the floral. I realized here I glued my card upside down. So I have to trim that bottom off and re-glue it onto another note card. I do that all the time. I make my cards upside down all the time. But you can also see here in the finished card that I added some more of those dazzling gemstones and look at how they kind of twinkle in the light. I just think they're fantastic and it goes really nicely with that silver matte cardstock. So here's a closer look. You can see the impression that we made with our doubled up die cut. This is the side of the cardstock where the uh, impression is pressed into the cardstock. Remember, you can use the other side too if you wanted to. And you can see the softness that those little vellum die cuts on top of that bold peach adds. By the way, I've got started on another card here. I haven't finished it up, but I just wanted to show you this was the one where I used the white cardstock and I just made an impression with one floral die cut. So I'll finish this one up off screen, pretty much the same design as the last. I also have the pink panel where I'm going to use the raised side on the front of our card. So we'll do that one next. But first I want to start with that silver foil sentiment strip there and show you how I did that very quickly. I'm using some Simon Says Stamp foil transfer cards. So you could use these as is, black and white, or you can foil and anywhere you see black would become that shiny foil. Now I'm using these Easter sentiments. I chose one that works for a non-Easter card, but do know there are other foil cards available. I know some people want foil, but don't want to invest in a big foil machine. This is a great option and it's very foolproof. So you can see there are lots of different options. All of the sentiment strips that I use in videos that Simon Says Stamp has can be foiled. So I have my Gina K Fuse Foiling System here. You can use a laminator, but the fuse really gives you a lot of control over the heat. I'm taking a piece of silver deco foil. You want to make sure you use like a ThermoWeb deco foil. I'll link to the exact one I use below. I'm going to lay that down onto the pre-printed sentiments and put it into the carrier sheet that comes with the fuse machine. I will then run it through the machine. Now the Fuse is an awesome laminating type machine. You can use it for laminating. You can use it to smooth out warped pieces. Lots of things you can do. In fact, I did a whole video on this tool and I will link to it up here on the top right and in my description below. I haven't used it in videos since because it sold out very quickly, but I do believe some are back in stock. So I'll put a link to that below also. And again, you can do this process with a regular laminator. I just really like that the fuse machine has different settings so you can get better control and better results. So once this comes through, we have that entire sheet foiled with silver, even the fine little detail. I do like to take a brush and brush away any of the excess foil that might be in the little letters, but you get great results. So now I have these all ready to create cards and I just need to cut out the one that I need for this card. You could use a sentiment strip die, but here's another trick. Take a post-it note and line it above your sentiment that you want to cut out and put that edge of that post-it note exactly where you want it to cut. Then line up the blade of your trimmer with the edge of that post-it note and cut. So now we can do the bottom side. I'll take the post-it note and shift it to the bottom of my sentiment, making sure that where the edge of that post-it note is, is where I want it to cut. Then I line up the edge of my post-it note with the blade on my trimmer and cut again, and we have a perfectly cut out sentiment strip. This I find is a very helpful technique, so you don't have to try to eyeball it. Now I can trim off the ends of this and easily add it to our card. So I finished this up off screen, just assembling it. You can see the background has the flower impression raised, which is opposite from our last card. I used a memory box miss you die sentiment there. So I did the shadow with white and the word miss you with black glossy cardstock. 
you can see my foil sentiment strip and how that silver foil really works nicely with those dazzling gemstones that I used for, used for some sparkle in the background. Now I know many people are interested in the foiled look, but don't have any machines to do foiling. Here's another option. I just got these and I thought they were brilliant. These are foiled greetings from Memory Box. They come in different packs. Some are white with gold foil, some are black with gold foil. And there are strips and there are circles. But this gives you the foil sentiment without needing a machine. So for example, there's a pack of thank you, and these are printed on very thick paper. So it's almost like chipboard. So you don't even need to stack anything up in order for it to hold up nicely through the mail. So you can see how thick they are here. This is another great option if you want that foiled look, but don't have the machines to do it on your own. Just thought I'd show these. I will definitely use them in the future. Okay, let's move on to our next card. And I had a lot of fun making this one and plan to make more. This actually has flaps on the front that open to sh reveal the card inside. So it's kind of a fun gatefold kind of card. Now for this, I'm using a new Simon Says Stamp Mandala die. So again, I'm using a die to make an impression. I die cut this four times. I glued two together and then I glued the other two together. So I have two pieces that are doubled up. Using a pencil and my T-roller, I'm putting a line right down the center in both directions on this four and a quarter by five and a half inch panel. This is watercolor paper, but again, you can use regular cardstock if you prefer. So we'll do the same process that we did before. I will mist that cardstock and lay it on top of that flexible embossing mat, following the sandwich that my manufacturer has given for making an impression with a die, but instead we're making an impression with die cuts. I'm using those pencil lines to get one of my doubled up die cuts centered on the top and the other on the bottom. I'll put the plate on top, run it through the machine and get that impression. And I'm blown away by the results with this one because it really looks like an embossing folder, but I used my dies. So it's a great way to get more use out of your die cuts. Look at that. It's absolutely gorgeous. Such a deep, deep impression. Okay, so now I can flip this over and carefully remove those die cuts. Again, if they want to stick, just heat it up a little bit so it dries and it'll remove nicely. So both sides of this look great. I'm going to set that aside for a moment and work on those doubled up die cuts. Yes, these are the die cuts I used to make the impression. I'm actually using those die cuts on my card. I'm inking them up with three colors of Simon Says Stamp ink. We have Lime Alicious, Surf, and Cadet. I'm just doing a bit of a blend, trying to do the same on both of the die cuts. Now I can set those aside, come back to our background with that impression. I'll put some strong adhesive on it and glue it directly onto the front of a four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card. Now we can create the flaps that will wrap around the front of this card. So I've created two more white die cuts. These are not doubled up, just one die cut thick. And I'm placing it on the left hand side and the right hand side on the front of our card using tape to hold it there. I'm doing this so that the little circle on the edge of these semicircles lines up there in the middle so that the two edges overlap just slightly. I can flip this over and all of those pieces hanging off the edge, I'm going to fold back onto the back of the note card. And I thought I'd use scotch tape here. You could use adhesive, but there's no need to wait for it to dry. A piece of scotch tape works nicely and it doesn't add any bulk, whereas tape might add a little bulk. Once I have the flaps taped down on both sides, I can flip my note card over and trim off any of that little bit of extra that's sticking off the top and the bottom. I also can remove that tape so that the front flaps will flip up. So now the only thing holding these flaps in place is that tape on the back of our note card. Don't worry, we'll cover up that tape a little bit later. So you can see how this opens up so that the uh, card is revealed and then you open the card up vertically. Now we can glue our inked up die cuts right on top of the flaps. So I'm putting some strong adhesive on the front of one of these flaps, just putting dots of that strong glue here and there. Then we can take the die cut and put it in place. And then we'll do the same thing on the other flap. I thought it was better to use a single die cut, that white single die cut, to create the flap so we have a nice flexible hinge on the side instead of trying to bend these doubled up die cuts around. All right, so once I gave that some time to dry, I'm just going to cut off the excess of that inked up die cut on both sides of the card. 
I used a paper sander just to smooth out the rough edges on the side, and then I am adding a piece of four and a quarter by five and a half inch white cardstock to the back, and that will just cover up those flaps where we taped them down. I really wanted a big, bold sentiment at the center of this, so I used the Concord and Ninth Just Say More die set. I off screen have created a bunch of these big hug sentiments and I use them quite often. I can just reach in and grab when they're already assembled. That's why you see them in so many of my videos. I'm gluing it to just one of the flaps, the flap on the left, and that way my card will open up nicely. So here's the completed card. You can pull those flaps open and then you can open up the card inside. You could even put a sentiment on the card right in the center. It'll be hidden behind the big hugs when the card is closed, but I decided to leave it plain. I did add a few of those dazzling gemstones to those circle die cuts just for a bit of sparkle. I definitely plan to make more of these and leave the sentiment off so that the next time I need a card, I can quickly add a sentiment and it'll be ready to go. Okay, let's move on to another card example. I wanted to show you how you really can create the look of like a repetitive pattern embossing folder, but using die cuts. So I have a piece of white cardstock here that is four and a quarter by five and a half inches, and I'm drawing a light pencil line along the center, both vertical and horizontal. I'm going to tape this on the back of a clear sticky mat. This is a misty sticky mat, and I'm taping it to the back so that the sticky part will be facing up towards the camera and I can assemble my die cuts on it. So I'm not putting these die cuts onto that cardstock. I'm just have that cardstock back there as a guide. Now these are doubled up die cuts using another new Simon Says Stamp die. So I die cut it twice, glued it together, and I did that multiple times. I'm placing these doubled up die cuts face down onto the sticky mat. If you don't have a sticky mat, you could just do this um, without the mat, but this helps to hold them in place as you form your pattern. I start down the center and then I build out from there until I have a pattern that I like. By the way, if you don't have a sticky mat, you could also use masking paper to hold it in place. Once I have them all done, I have a piece of Gina K Masking Magic, which is my favorite masking paper. It is cut to four and a quarter by five and a half inches also. I'm going to take that and place it right down onto these die cuts. So this masking magic will stick to the back of the die cuts and allow me to pick them all up at once in that nice pattern. I will press the masking magic down with a brayer because I really want to make sure that it's connected to those die cuts and will pull off of the sticky mat. I'll flip this over, remove that cardstock we taped there that was just a guide, and then pull away the sticky mat carefully. So now I have all of these die cuts assembled and stuck together with the masking paper. Now let's do our technique. I have a piece of regular white cardstock on the flexible embossing mat of my die cut machine. I'll mist it a little bit and then take all of those die cuts and place it face down. So by using that masking paper trick, all of these will stay stuck together and assembled in the right position as we do the technique. And the best part is I can use these die cuts that are still stuck together multiple times to make multiple backgrounds. And check out the detail that I'm able to pick up using this technique. You can see those fine lines in the impression, absolutely gorgeous. Now the rest of this card is very simple. I created another white die cut and instead of cutting it from a bunch of different colors of cardstock to get a rainbow, I'm coloring that white die cut with Copic markers. You could use any markers you want and this will give me uh, a faster way of creating that rainbow flower without cutting up a bunch of cardstock. Now I glued that right into the center impression on the card and added some of those dazzling gems and another of the birthday basic sentiments. I did trim the background down and added it to a black note card that's four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And there you can see the background matches perfectly with that focal point die cut. Okay, I have one more pair of cards for you. Now with this one, I'm using a shadow die to make an impression and then I put the regular die cut in the center. So for this, I'm using these new Tulip Stem products from Simon Says Stamp and CZ Design. There's a die set. You can see the die set there. There are little layering stencils in the middle, and there are foil transfer cards that coordinate with them. You can get these together or separately. I'm just using the dies today. 
Now off screen, I die cut a white cardstock oval and I'm placing that on my embossing mat. And I've also die cut two of the tulip shadows and glued them together so it's nice and thick. I'm placing it onto that white oval and doing our impression trick, running it through the die cut machine. So this will just create kind of a um, tulip shadow that's pressed into the cardstock. This is a great technique that you can do with any dies you have shadows for. For the background of my card, I'm using the new Simon Says Stamp Mosaic Tulip Stencils. I really like the style of these stencils. There are three layering stencils and I'm starting with the first one. I'm applying white pigment ink onto light pink cardstock and I'm using the new Tim Holtz ink blending tools that are in the mini size and I'm crazy about these. You can see not only are they cute, but they allow you to get into smaller spaces when you do stenciling or ink blending on a die cut. I absolutely love using the ink blending tools for my pigment inks, such as white pigment ink that I'm using here. I like the, uh, these foam tools more than using a brush with these type of inks. So I'm able to really press this ink into the openings and kind of press and swirl it around to get as much white pigment ink down as I can. Now I'm starting with a very light pink cardstock, so this white will be subtle, but it'll look great. Now I can remove that stencil and you can see that subtle white inking. I thought I'd add some shine to this, so I'm using Perfect Pearls from Ranger in the Confetti White. This is a very fine pigment powder that will stick to that wet white pigment ink. So I just put some down and I brush it around using a brush. A little goes a long way. Once I'm done, I brush off as much as I can from my cardstock, and then I use a dry cloth to wipe off the excess. This will give us some really cool, like pearly iridescent shine that looks great when you tilt it in the light. This is one of those that looks so good in person. I wish I could capture it and in the video and in the photos. All right, now it's time for the second stencil. For this one, I'm using another Tim Holtz ink blending tool in the mini size. There are different replacement foams, so you can use the one tool with different foams. Now with this one, I'm using the Honey Bee Gold Metallic Ink. This is again a pigment ink, so you really wanna put this down heavily, and it's easier to do so with this foam tool than with the brush. Now when I put this down, I felt like that was a little too dark gold, but don't worry, I have a way that I can fix that. Once I've inked up that whole stencil with the gold pigment ink, I will once again use my Perfect Pearls, that same confetti white, and brush it over the gold ink. This will give it more shine and give it a softer gold look. It almost looks like a shiny champagne color. I'll knock off the excess, use a dry cloth to remove even more of the excess, and we have lots of shine happening here. Then for the third stencil, I'm just going to do a little tone on tone inky, inking. So I have Simon Says Stamp Cheeky Ink. And because these are tiny little holes in the stencil, I'm once again going to use the Tim Holtz Mini Ink Blending Tool. I really like the size. It's great for getting into these tight spots. And I could even do each area a different color with that small size. All right, so now that my background is done, you could spray this with a light mist of water to kind of fix that perfect pearl on, or you can use a fixative spray. I just left mine as is. I have an oval die here. It's the same oval die that I used for my impression that I created earlier, and I cut that right from the center. This way, by cutting out that center, I can use that center oval on another card, since I'm covering it up on this card on the left. I might as well cut it out and save it for a bonus card. Okay, so I have my impression oval here. I glued the die cut in the center of it. So you can see there's like an impression shadow around it. I'm filling in the openings with some peach colors of cardstock just to give it a pop of color there in the center. At this point, I decided a silver outline would look nice on this tulip. So I die cut it from silver matte cardstock and I'm gluing it right on top of the white die cuts there. And then this oval would get glued in the center of our peach background oval. Now I assembled all that onto a card. And by the way, this card's a little bit bigger. I believe it's about four and a half by about six. So I'll use an A6 envelope for that, or you could use a five by seven envelope. 
for this sentiment, I went into my drawer of pre-done sentiments I've left over from previous videos. And this is from a Simon Hurley foil set. So I foiled white foil on black glossy cardstock and used the die to cut it out. I will link to the video showing how I did that sentiment up here on the top right and in my description below. And I have that leftover patterned oval piece. So I created a second bonus card with this. This doesn't have any impressions made with the die, just using leftover pieces. This time I used an actual embossing folder on the background. That's the new neatly knitted 3D embossing folder from Simon Says Stamp. I added the oval to the center and another tulip die cut along with the Eura Gift Sentiment. I told you I really liked that one. All right, so there is a really easy way to truly stretch your supplies. You're using your dies not for just for die cutting, but also to create a faux embossing folder look. If you're interested in any supply I talked about today or any video I mentioned, I have that linked in my description below. At the end here, I'll link to a couple of those videos if you're looking for more inspiration. I thank you for spending this time with me. I'll be back very soon with another video. Have a great week.